This video is about making thermite and secondarily thermate. Can't get away from that information. It was first discovered by Hans Goldschmidt, who was German, probably didn't have to say that, in 1893, and he patented it in 1895. It's an incendiary mixture, not an explosive. It's typically made of a less reactive metal oxide plus a more reactive pure metal. The classic thermite mix is iron oxide or rust, Fe203 plus aluminum. Both are powdered and usually in a three to one ratio and the powder size matters. The smaller the particles, the better it burns and the hotter it burns. The reaction for that is iron oxide plus aluminum yields aluminum oxide plus free iron. The other two thermites I'm gonna look at in this video are manganese dioxide plus aluminum in a 12 to five ratio. The reaction for that is three manganese dioxide plus four aluminums yields two aluminum oxides this time and three manganese free metal. And the second one here is the chromium oxide plus aluminum in a 14 to five ratio. The reaction for that is chromium oxide plus aluminum yields aluminum oxide again, plus two chromiums. And you can see that I have aluminum underlined here because for each one of these aluminum is used. And this is definitely the more reactive pure metal powdered, of course, that we're using in these mixes. Just one note about this last one right here. It tends to be really hard to light. I might add some magnesium. In fact, I probably will. And of course, added to all of these is the heat that's given off by these reactions, which are sometimes used for welding. It's so hot and railroad ties are sometimes welded using these mixes. Focusing on the iron oxide and aluminum mix, it ignites at 1300 to 1600 degrees Celsius and it burns at 2200 Celsius approximately. Sparklers often used to light these mixes burn at 1370 degrees Celsius on average, which is typically hot enough to start these on fire. And that's what I'll be using for each one of these. Then there's thermate. It's used primarily in the military as an incendiary grenade and also just to burn, to, burn through materials they need to. It does burn hotter than thermite at around 3000 to 3500 degrees Celsius. The simpler mix that I'm going to try, which is not the military one, nobody knows what goes in that one for sure, will be the iron oxide and thermite, 68.7%. Barium nitrate at 29%, sulfur at 2%, and the binder, they use PBN. I'm going to use dextrin, which is way more simpler, but that's what I'm going to use at 0.3%. Materials I'm going to use for these, for the thermites, the amounts will be iron oxide and aluminum and 75 grams to a 25 gram mix, the manganese dioxide to aluminum and a 48 gram to 20 gram mix, the chromium oxide to aluminum, 56 grams to 20 grams. And of course, all the ones on the right here are the aluminum weights. For the thermate, I'm going to come right back here because I'm just going to convert these percentages into grams. So we'll end up with 100 grams when we're done. In the methods, this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to take a styrofoam cup that has a cap on it and put inside of there the two metals that I'll be using. Shake it up really good. And then I'll build something which I hope looks like this. I have a couple of steel discs I'm going to support between some wooden um, supports here. Put the thermite on the top and burn it just to see how far it can burn through the first steel plate and then the second one. These are not that thick. I think they're about a sixteenth of an inch, so they're not really that thick. But that's what I plan on doing just to see how each one goes. And then for the thermate, because it has dextrin in it or PBN, if you make, I guess, the original, um, it's meant to be packed down. So I'll pack it into a cardboard tube and then I'll put the sparklers on the top here and just light those. The thermate will be new to me. I'm really interested to see how that burns. But let's go now and start making our thermites and then, of course, eventually our thermate. As I mentioned, here are the seven items that will be needed to make our thermites and thermate. They include aluminum powder, iron oxide, manganese dioxide, pure manganese dioxide out of batteries. I might give it a try. Chromium oxide and for the thermate, barium nitrate and sulfur. This funny little contraption is what I'm going to use with the iron oxide and aluminum thermite. I'm going to put a pile on the top there, see if it burns through. I think it will. Then hit this, burn through that. I think it will also. And then maybe a surprise at the bottom, it's like some flash powder it can light. But these are both made out of steel. We'll see how it goes. 75 grams of some nice red iron oxide pre-weighed. 20 grams of aluminum powder pre-weighed. This has always been my primary way of doing it and essentially binding three sparklers together and sticking it in the pile. This is a simple styrofoam container here with the plastic top on it. Yeah, there we go. So what I'm going to do is dump in the iron oxide in here. And the aluminum powder. Put the top on. 
hold it on good or this will make a mess if it breaks open but there we go and then just shake good there we go I probably should wait a minute because there's gonna be a lot of metal dust floating in the air I'm sure but there's our thermite I'm outside and it's almost dark out here I'm gonna pour the iron oxide and aluminum thermite here all right next I'm gonna place in the sparklers And lastly, Didn't quite get through that second plate. Flash powder on the bottom. We'll light it anyway. As it cools, it's cracking. While it's still cooling down, Just a quick peek at it during the daytime again you can see this has a lot of metal on there but it wasn't hot enough to go through unfortunately but it's pretty heavy 48 grams of pure manganese dioxide pre-weighed 20 grams of aluminum powder pre-weighed this is the same container I used before for the iron oxide so here's the manganese dioxide the pure form and the aluminum powder. Once again, just shake. We're gonna let that one sit for a second. All right, let's take the top off here and pretty well mixed. I'm going to do the manganese dioxide one in the daytime here and use this pan which did not burn through and see if this will do it instead. All right, placing the sparklers and lighting it. Well, I'd say that was more explosive than thermite, for sure. Well, that was certainly a surprise, which is why you always stand back. I uh, see it bent the pan a little bit there. That was interesting. Um, yeah, not sure what to say about that other than it blew up rather than burning through. 48 grams of manganese dioxide from batteries, pre-weighed. 20 grams of aluminum powder, pre-weighed. Once again, using the same container, this is the manganese dioxide from batteries, so it has some carbon mixed into it. The weights are the same, though. I use the same weights. Dump that in there. The aluminum powder. And by golly, you know the rest. Once again, let that sit for a sec. All right, and here's our battery manganese dioxide thermite. Let's go light it. 
So far, the pan has won. Let's see if this will do it. This is the battery manganese dioxide thermite once again. Placing the sparklers and lighting it again. Looks like a little carbon helps the uh, burn rate slow down enough to make it into a thermite. Very good. The pan survives. Because chromium oxide is so light and fluffy and blows around and you do not want to breathe it in, I weighed this outside, but here is 56 grams of chromium oxide pre-weighed. And yet another 20 grams of aluminum powder pre-weighed. Here's the 56 grams of the chromium oxide, to which I'm going to add the 20 grams of aluminum powder. Now, this is notoriously known to be hard to start. So, I'm going to cheat a bit by adding some magnesium. There's only about 5 grams here or so, but I'm putting that in there to hopefully help it start. Okay, that one definitely needs to sit for a bit. And here is our chromium oxide thermite. Because this stuff is so hard to start, I'm going to pour it into another, oh, nice can. Well, most of it landed in there. And then use this empty can to press it down. Wow, this stuff is like, hmm. Done. Placing the spark plug, so I'm going to start with that. Hopefully it starts off that. And lighting it. So much for being hard to start. Boy, it's glowing red hot. But it did not burn through that pan. Or the tin can, of course. 51.53 grams of iron oxide, pre-weighed. 17.18 grams of powdered aluminum, pre-weighed. 29 grams of barium nitrate, pre-weighed. 2 grams of sulfur, pre-weighed. And for the binder, since I don't have the proper one, here is 0.3 grams of dextrin, pre-weighed. Using the same procedure as before, I'm going to add the iron oxide here. Aluminum powder. Barium nitrate, sulfur, and finally the dextrin. We're going to let it sit again. Opening it up, and we can see the thermate mix, which I have a feeling because of the iron oxide will look very much like the thermite mix, which of course it does. You add the dextrin to the mix as it's been discussed to pack it so this is what i'm going to use right here i'll be putting the thermate mix in here packing it down and sticking the sparklers in right from the top like so done and i'm just going to pack it down using this pretty much empty whiteout bottle And as you can see, it is significantly less once it's packed. It was packed in there so tight I had to dig a little hole out just so I can get the sparklers in there. So what I'm going to do is put these in that hole right there. And then I'm going to take and pack the other stuff around the sparklers. Here's the final Thermate product here. I just wanted to show this to you. So now let's go light it. I've run out of new plates, so we're going to use this older one and just set it on the side here. The other thing is that a huge rainstorm just went through, so the fence is soaked and the ground is soaked. It's 92% humidity out here, so this is going to be the hottest thermate that we light, and so this is a good time to do it. I added one more sparkler on top. Give me more time.
that was definitely cool. As this burns out, let's look and see if we can see a hole or not. And I do believe, yes, there is one right there. Very good. And on the bottom here, yeah, look at those balls of metal. They were not there before I lit this one in particular. So, all right, very good. After we just burned that thermate and it cooled down, I went and picked up some of these bigger chunks here off the ground. Interestingly, they smell like sulfur a lot, in spite of the small amount we put in there. They're lighter than I expected. However, they are mostly iron. No big surprise there. From the initial thermite, I broke off these couple pieces from this pan, so let's take a quick look at those. There's iron in there, of course, and this can be easily proven just with a simple magnet. Took one of the pieces and ground it down here and you can see how nicely the iron coalesced in this one area here it was a pretty rough grind but it still left a, a almost a mirror like finish 